Hello and welcome back to the Business Growth Club. This is your weekly edition from us and in this week's edition we're going to continue our journey looking at calls to action. In the last couple of videos I've described what I call the 90% problem. The fact that up to 90% of the people who would like to respond to your marketing materials never do because the call to action doesn't make it easy enough. Now a few weeks ago we looked at QR codes, a new invention in marketing which are working very well. And last week we looked at pearls, personalized URLs, which you can use in just about any marketing campaign to allow the call to action to be stronger. Today we're going to finish off the call to action series by looking at several more solutions that you can use in your business. The first call to action we're going to look at today is known as a friendly URL, a friendly link. Now let me explain how these work. I was listening to the radio the other day and there was somebody on it offering a free report at the end of the interview um, where they said you can get a report about what I've been talking about, go to this website. And at that point I thought, great, really good marketing. You're going to take the people who are interested, who've been following you on this radio interview and you're going to translate some of them to your followers via data capture by giving them a free report. Brilliant marketing. And then he said the website is www.myflashywebsite.com slash free report slash january dot htm now is anyone in the world ever going to remember that i'm listening to the radio so the chances are i'm driving around in the car and i'm interested in this person and it's www.myflashywebsite.com slash free report slash january dot htm i mean it's not something you're going to remember when you get home now we talked in the first video about the problem that even a friendly URL can be difficult to remember but you've absolutely got no chance with one like this so a friendly URL could have made this easier. Let me explain. On one of my websites, our business growth accountants website, uh, we have um, and we're currently running a, a free giveaway for a book. Now the web address from the web designer is http colon slash slash www.thebusinessgrowthaccountants.com forward slash question mark page underscore id equals 27. Now if we tell people to go to that website, number one they won't remember it. Number two, even if they're at a computer and they can see a printed copy, for instance in a sales letter, then the potential for them to sort of, you know, enter a typo, you know, question mark becomes exclamation mark or underscore becomes hyphen or whatever is enormous. So what we can do is we can use a friendly URL. Now I bought two of these. Uh, one of them is biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk and one is biggerbetterbusinessbook.co.uk. Now we're just going to jump across to the internet now and we're going to have a look at how these would work. So I'm just going to type in that biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk into the web browser and you'll see this takes them straight to this page so they're on this page now where they can access this free copy of the book now you'll notice in the browser that actually it's only www.biggerbetterbook.co.uk it's not taking them to that big long address so if I don't want to I can make them feel like this is the genuine address to show you how useful this is actually there's the biggerbetterbusinessbook.co.uk which sends them again to this website. You'll see it's reloading the screen and it goes to exactly the same website again. So it gets them straight onto here, but the advantage is that I've actually been able to give them two different links. So I could decide to send two different groups um, this link. One is Bigger Better Business and one's uh, biggerbetterbusinessbook.com and it sends them to the website and I will know out of the different groups which one worked better so I can say maybe one group was solicitors and one group was architects and it went to both of them and I wanted to know well who responds more the solicitors or the architects just by doing this I can I can have that effect so do you see the power of that this friendly URL which would you be more likely to respond to um, http colon slash slash www.thebusinessgrowthaccountants.com uh, forward slash question mark page underscore id equals 27 or biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk now even if you heard this on the radio the book is called bigger better business by the way how to build a bigger better business so it, it, it's um, it's on message I said you can you can uh, buy a copy of my latest book at uh, biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk and away they go they would probably remember that now, there are some ways that you can make it even more distinctive, however. Remember, the whole point here is to give people a URL, a link, a www dot that they will remember. 
So it's a, what's why it's called a friendly URL. It's friendly. And stuff like slash question mark equals page underscore ID 27 just doesn't cut it. So here's some ways you can make your links even more friendly. Number one, that um, HTTP colon slash slash, you don't even need to use that these days. You don't, you don't ever need that. At no point do you need that. So don't have that. You don't even need the www dot. Now sometimes I use www dot because um, otherwise people get a bit confused. If you say just biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk, some people get confused as to what they do with it. It depends on their age. If they're under 40, they're unlikely to get confused. And if your target market is teenagers, don't even worry about it. They'll, they're, they're just not remotely bothered about that. They'll type in biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk and go straight there. Uh, they know what they're doing. However, an older audience, um, they might get confused by that. It's not all about age, of course. It could be um, if you were sending it to IT people, it wouldn't matter how old they were. But if you just compare the two on the screen here, HTTP uh, colon uh, slash slash www dot biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk or just biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk. Do you see how the biggerbetterbusiness.co.uk is a lot easier to remember? You can also go one step further by making them look more attractive on the page. Sometimes just using a capital letter works. So bigger, better business and using capital letters. Sometimes you can make one of the words bold. So bigger, better business.co.dk is three different words. So the middle word better is made bold. That way it makes it easier for people to see that it's bigger, better business. On the one where we have bigger, better business book.co.uk, uh, on one of them I've decided to make it red and bold so it really stands out bigger better business book co uk and then on the one below that I've decided to underline it so bigger better underlined business book underlined now obviously these ones work much better in print when you're talking on the radio or a presentation or whatever and you say bigger better business co uk you're just hoping people are more likely to remember that than the more convoluted one but when it's in print, do everything you can to make it easier for them to understand what you're saying. And by using these capital letters, bold, red, underlined, it makes it easier for people to differentiate between the words. Because bigger, better, businessbook.co.uk is a long address. However, when you make it bold or underlined, it becomes obvious which words they are. And then it becomes very easy because everybody can spell bigger, better, businessbook.co.uk. Now there's another advantage which I alluded to last time which is you can actually have the same website page but you can have lots of different links sending people to that campaign page. Now I'm going to give you a couple examples and again I'll jump over to the internet and show you these different examples. I actually have for this one giveaway page which I'll show you when we get there, I have about 50 or 60 different URLs, these friendly URLs all pointing towards the same page. I do that because I run different campaigns and I want to know how the different response rates are. And I find the easiest way to track it is actually to use a different URL rather than using different um, different website landing pages. For me, this is easier. I'll explain that in more detail later, but for now, we're just going to jump over to the internet. And we're just going to type in these three different web addresses. So the first one is freeguide.biz. And we're just going to go into our web browser, www.freeguide.biz. And this takes us to 101 proven ways to get more uh, business. So this is a free report which I'm giving away to people. Very simple, um, quite old-fashioned lead page. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the lead pages. You know what they are by now. Uh, but this is an old-fashioned design. This, this one works very well. Um, I do caution you, uh, I find this ugly, you'll find this ugly, but it works better than a pretty one. We've discussed this before, watch other videos on, on lead pages. But this takes people to this one, uh, 101 proven ways. Now, I've also got www.101guide.co.uk. So a totally different web address. So you would imagine this would take people to a totally different website. But as you can see here, it's taking people to exactly the same website. And then I've got the next one, which is secondproduct.co.uk. Second product, by the way, is the ancillary product theory. The idea that if you introduce a second product into your business, um, you will absorb much more profits. It's an up or cross sell. You're probably familiar with that by now because I talk about it a lot. And again, this one sends people directly to this website. So do you see the power of this? 
what we're saying is you've got three different web um, addresses but they all send you to the same lead page now the advantage of this are number one as I've said I've got 50 or 60 different links like that all going to the same website page and that's because sometimes I want to know who's responding so I might send a mailer to let's say 5,000 people but I want to differentiate them and segment them into 25 different categories maybe I want to see all the businesses with a small turnover medium and large turnover so I might differentiate in that way in the next mailer I might give people maybe a different sales letter so in my sales letter I might say to that list of 5,000 have 10 different letters split equally and they've all got a different link so I'm split testing and I can see from the analytics on the landing page which of the links they went to so let's say I sent um, say about 5,000 um, 10 different URLs so I change the headline 10 different ways so it's a list of 5,000 I send it to 5,000 of them but each letter is um, to 500 of them is different so 10 different headlines all going to 500 people and I want to know which of them works better so one of them has free guide dot biz one has 101guide.co.uk, one has secondproduct.co.uk, and all the other ones I'm using. And then, when they arrive on that page, I can say, okay, for freeguide.co.uk, uh, we got um, 100 people responding. But on 101guide.co.uk, we only got 10. Now, I will know that the headline in the first one works much, much better than the second one. So there's two advantages here. The first advantage is www.101guide.co.uk is just an easy website address to remember for a guide called 101 ways um, to increase your um, your business and your profit 101 guide for a 101 guide so number one first and foremost it's an easy way of remembering a URL a friendly URL much better than http www.mywebsite.com slash paid slash report dot html which nobody will ever remember and it's harder to type in secondly and this is where all of marketing becomes holistic and everything links to everything else, it's actually much easier for you to start to split test and see which one's working better. So that's the way it, it works. And like I say, it's, it's limitless. I have 50 or 60 ones going to that very web page there, which has added thousands of people to a list. And we just, we just know we're different promotions. Sometimes we'll send different URLs to different lists. So we might have dentists and we might have dentistreport.co.uk. And we want them to believe it's a report just for dentists. But it isn't because we're, we're kind of cheating, if you will, and we're doing it the easy way. But because they type in dentistreport.co.uk and they go to that landing page, all of a sudden they believe that this must be a report for them. So it's limitless. Number one, it's a friendly URL, it's easy to use. Secondly, it helps with the split testing and all of your marketing. Sometimes it's easier for stuff like blogs. I routinely want to refer people to my blog. However, the URL, the link changes every week. The reason it changes every week is I want people to see my most recent blog post. I don't want them to see one from 10 months ago because that's not the point of a blog. So if I want to direct people to my blog, um, it would be a really long, convoluted URL. It would be, um, you know, myblog.com slash um, uh, blog post slash, and then the date. So it might be the 19th of the 10th, 2012. And then I think it's dot um, um, htm or html or, or something like that. It's impossible, and I couldn't remember a different one. So I just bought the link damonmiller.co.uk. And again, we'll jump over to the internet and we'll type that in. And you'll see that DamonMiller.co.uk, so I'm telling people, oh, go to um, go to my blog, go to DamonMiller.co.uk, and they jump onto this website, and as you can see, this is my blog. There it is, and there's all of my blog posts. So if I said to you, go to my blog, it's, um, you know, blog slash page slash date dot HTML, you'd forget it. Whereas DamonMiller.co.uk will send you to this blog. Nice and easy way of doing it. So it's got even more advantages. It's a friendly URL, so it helps the person who's reading the website, but it also helps you just to remember what your web address is. And Here's another example of how you can start to combine your marketing so you start to have a holistic approach. Now, number one, um, switchaccountants.co.uk is an easy website address to remember. It's our company name. But also, sometimes we want to promote northeastaccountants.com simply because we want to appear... Uh, for a regional campaign. 
So switchaccountants.co.uk works for national campaigns, no problem. Any pa- campaign in the UK, switchaccountants.co.uk works. So when we're promoting, um, say, our online accountancy side of uh, Switch Accountants, we can do that. But when we're sending to businesses in the northeast, sometimes we prefer northeastaccountants.co.uk. Uh, sorry, .com. It also helps for SEO and pay per click. Um, you know, if you type in, for instance, um, accountants northeast, and we're on pay per click. If our web address is switchaccountants.co.uk, that's okay. If it's northeastaccountants.com, all of a sudden it's much more relevant. And the more relevant you can make your adverts on pay-per-click, the better it is. Also helps with your um, SEO if one of my keywords was northeastaccountants.com. Now, I'm unlikely to have switch accountants as one of my keywords because that would be stupid, whereas northeast accountants would be very useful. Now, of course... As you're starting to figure out with this, they send you to the same website. So we're just going to type in switchaccountants.co.uk and it takes us to this website. And then we're going to type in northeastaccountants.com and again you can see it's taken people to the identical website, exactly the same website. So once again, you can see the advantages. Number one, it's easy to remember. Number two, it just looks better. If we're promoting to businesses in the northeast, it works. Works as well in Durham. If we were promoting Accountants Durham, then you could have Accountants hyphen Durham or something like that. As I say, I've got zillions of these different ones and they just work really well. So number one, they're a great call to action. Number two, they just help you in your wider marketing campaigns. The next one is an alias domain. Now, this is quite important if a lot of people know about you and a lot of people are going to be typing your business website address into the computer. People sometimes make spelling mistakes, that's normal. And I don't really know how you prevent people from making spelling mistakes other than making your business easy to spell. So um, if your company is called um, abcedariansuk.com, uh, um, the name, you know, the word abcedarian is quite difficult to spell. Um, so if we were to go to Google now and go, oh, that guy on the radio who's just given a brilliant interview, he was from abcedariansuk.com. Oh, how do you spell abcedarian? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give up. Whereas if they had just had a simpler website, which may be abcuk.com. I imagine that website address has gone by the way, but, you know, that might be easier. So abcedarians, so go to abcuk.com. Much easier to remember. So if people make spelling mistakes, I don't think you can avoid it other than if you've got difficult to spell words, um, don't, don't, you know, just try and avoid them. Um, Sometimes people's names are difficult to spell. Um, I've done it on uh, on my URL where people often spell my surname incorrectly, Um, so I buy the alias for that so I, I can combat that. Now this is what you should do if you're anticipating that people will get your website address wrong. Uh, for our one of our one of our businesses, uh, the businessgrowthaccountants.com, um, we have the businessgrowthaccountants.com. However, we know that people routinely um, are typing it in. Like I say, avoiding any spelling errors. Which you know, if they can't spell accountants, there's not much I can do about that. However, assuming they can, we know that people spell that right, and then they go and typing .co.uk or .net or .biz because they can't remember. You know, it's .com, but they believe it's a .co.uk. I don't know why, but this is a really common mistake. You'll just have to believe me that it is a common mistake. So what we've done is this alias principle. For businessgrowthaccountants.com, we also own .biz, .net, .co.uk. Again, I'll jump over to the internet now and show you how that works. As I say, I can't really explain to you why people make this mistake, but it's a really common mistake. And if we didn't own them, it would just take you to a totally separate website and you'd be in trouble. So we can see now we've typed in businessgrowthaccountants.com and it's taking you to the Business Growth Accountants website. And then we're going to type in, or we're going to copy and paste and make it quicker, .biz. So someone's made a mistake and they believe it's .biz. Or maybe you want them to go to .biz and have typed in .com. Again, you can see this is taking people to the identical website. And then... Uh, the business growth, growth accountants.net again it's taking them to the same website page as you can see and then .co.uk for good measure so maybe we've told them to go to .co.uk and they've typed in sorry we told them to go to .com and they've gone to .co.uk because they've made a mistake easy mistake to make there we are we've overcome that mistake 
as I say, I can't tell you why people make that mistake, but you just have to believe me, maybe the fact that I've gone to the extent of buying these domains um, and, and kind of maintain them will just prove to you that I'm, I'm not completely mad and telling you rubbish. This is a very common mistake. There is nothing worse in the world than somebody knowing about your business and going into Google and typing in .biz, not .com, and your website's .com, and you lose that traffic. That's really bad. That's, that's not what you want. Now, I believe you only need to buy .com, .biz, .net, .co.uk, unless you're a charity and .org is appropriate. But, you know, you can buy .org, .uk, and .info, and all the rest of it. But they're not very common, or they're not very common for now. Whereas .com, .biz, .net, .co.uk... And that just helps. So again, these are sort of call to actions, but they're friendly URLs and it just makes it easier. If I was running a major marketing campaign, and let's say I wanted, um, say, a list of 5,000 people I was sending this to, or maybe even 50,000 people, it was a national campaign, and I had the business growth accounts at .com, that was the call to action, I would without doubt buy .biz.net.co.uk. I'd probably buy um, business growth accounts at .com as well and miss off the the. And I might even if I knew there was common misspellings, like if I was giving them my own name, and I know people spell it incorrectly, I'd buy the aliases of that as well. If you're doing a major marketing campaign, for the price of doing this, you just can't afford non-responses. So do you see how a call to action, it's not just about making a web address memorable or having a QR code. It's actually about predicting people's mistakes and saying, right, well, if you're going to spell our name wrong, I'm going to do the alias for our name. Um, or if we've got a really difficult name to spell, like I said, you know, Abecedarians UK, we're just going to make it easy by being abc.co.uk or whatever. So you can do it in different ways. So a call to action is wider than you first imagine. And it's difficult for me to give you numbers because nobody's ever really studied this and I don't really know how popular this is. I just know it's a really common mistake. I've had people telephone our office saying, we received your postcard for this you know, whatever this offer, book a free session or whatever offer we had going. And I've typed in thebusinessgrowthaccountants.com and it's not working. And we're like, okay, so, and we check the spelling and we're like, no, I'm .com. And then we say, just, just, um, is it definitely .com? And they go, oh no, I've typed in .co.uk. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, but people are ringing the office saying, oh, I've typed in the wrong address and it's not working. Most people won't do that, by the way. Most people will just go, what a bunch of idiots. They've given me this web address and it doesn't work. It's their mistake, but they don't know that. So, of course, when we have people doing that, and I, I know from talking to lots of other people this happens, it's it's a well-known problem in the, the kind of the web marketing world. That's why we buy these aliases. And for any major campaign we run, as I say, I would, I would not risk not running these. The sort of cost you pay... Um, is um, for a .co.uk you pay about four ninety nine, so five pounds a year. For a .net, .biz, .com you pay eleven pounds a year. So you know for the cost of say we want them to go to a .com, but we um, we mitigate the risk by getting .biz, .net, .co.uk cost us an extra twenty seven pounds. You know no one's going to complain about that. You know one response to us would be worth potentially thousands of pounds. So it's worth indemnifying yourself against that risk. The company uh, that I use to host all of my um, all of my uh, sort of friendly URLs is 123-reg.co.uk. At the bottom of this uh, video, you'll see a link to them. Again, you know, I've got to say this, I'm not financially responsible for your dealings with them. However, I can say I've been using them for years and I've never had a problem. Um, basically, you buy whatever web address you want to buy. So I go to that website and I buy thebusinessgrowthaccountants.com. And I send that to my web designer, and my web designer does all of the website stuff that web designers do. And then I also buy .biz, .net, and .co.uk. And then in the one, two, three reg, for this £11 a year, or, or, or £5 a year, they allow you to do something known as web forwarding. And you go in, and you click on web forwarding, and it says, what website address do you want to send this to? And I say, I want the business growth accountants .co .uk to forward to .com. And that, and that does that. So you've seen with these live examples I've given you, it takes you straight to that website. So for this $4.99 or, or 10 99 that will do it all for you with 123reg. There's lots of other providers out there. Type in web, web forwarding providers, find other people. But like I say, I've used 123reg. Uh, their prices are very competitive and uh, they work brilliantly. Now, I won't show you how to set up web forwarding because 123reg um, have brilliant videos that show you how to do it. 
they also have um, online live chat so people will help you um, or if you are struggling I'll record another video and send it to you privately it'll only take a few minutes but I don't want to clog up this video because you might you might already have your own web hosting provider you know if you're using GoDaddy I'm sure GoDaddy actually allow you to do this so um, so it's up to you who you want to use but um, I would certainly be doing this for your website address um, there's no question about that. If your website, you know, mywebsite.com, so if you're John Smith Plumbers and it's johnsmithplumbers.com, buy all these other ones. Number one, it makes it easier for your calls to action in case people make mistakes. The 90% problem will be reduced just by this one measure. But number two, it stops your competitors buying the other ones. You know, it might be that someone else die, buys .co.uk and then somebody responds to your marketing but types in .co.uk, not .com, and they go to one of your competitors. It's probably the situation you want to avoid. So that's friendly URLs, a, a, a really broad area in marketing. Uh, very effective as a call to action. Can indemnify against the risk of people making mistakes. And it can also make it so much easier to remember. Remember the first one, that one with HTTP and, you know, forward slash question mark page equals ID and all the rest of it. Or, um, you know, freeguide.com. You know, which one's easier for you to remember? So that's um, that's uh, friendly URLs. The other form of um, call to action I want to talk about today, or one of the other ones I want to talk about today, is text back. These are really effective. Again, if you go to the um, the link, the second link in the list here, that will send you to a provider of text back services. Again, I'm not financially responsible for your transactions with them, but um, it's a it's a very cost-effective service. The way it works, and you'll have seen this, particularly you'll see this on billboards and other advertisements where people are on the move. Um, it says, text the word, you know, whatever, offer, um, information, report, session, you know, whatever it happens to be. Text a word to a five-digit uh, number. So, you know, 86420 now. And what happens is somebody goes, oh, right, I'm not a computer, but I can text it. So they text offer to this um, this number, and within seconds it sends them a response. Now, here's the great something about this. You can change the message as you go. So let's have a look at this. Let's imagine that you are running lots of different advertising for a month in lots of different media, uh, but you want to see what's the best response you can give people. So you might decide that you'll change the message. Maybe for every week in the month you're going to use a different message. And you're going to see which one increases better responses. You're split testing again. So another example of how you can use this as a call to action. So you reduce the 90% problem. And more people get interested in your services. However, you also have the opportunity to split test and see what works better for next time. Can you see how just giving somebody a phone number to call or actually saying text a word to a number now and we will give you the information straight away that's brilliant and of course you can keep communicating with them if they don't respond you can send reminders another something that's coming in with the smartphones is in your text message reply you can give them a link so you can say go to our website to find out more www.yourdomain.co.uk and if you're on a smartphone you only need to hover over that and click on it and it will use the web browser to take you straight there so do you see how you're mixing everything here? You're split testing, you're using a call to action, you're varying your message and you're actually giving them not just the information they requested, the prices they requested, the offer they requested, but you're also getting them onto your website to find out more. So it all, you know, no, no things in marketing are ever kind of one direction or they help in lots of different ways. Another one that you can use, another call to action, this is kind of an, a trusty old one, this. Um, if you call the number 0800 0288 500, you can claim a free report from me. Um, we've got lots of these, and you'd be surprised the number of people that still call these. So we, we might tell somebody um, to claim your free copy of this report, um, or whatever it happens to be, go to www. Um, you know, friendlyurl.com or call 0800 0288 500 any time, uh, 24 hours a day, and leave us your details, and we'll send you, uh, we'll send you the information that you've requested. Now, as I say, you'd imagine people wouldn't do this these days if they go on the internet. However, we do, and it's not just an older audience who you might imagine aren't so familiar with computers. All sorts of people do. Now, again, um, on the third link below this video, you'll see a link to uh, Duocall, uh, who are a company that I've used for many years, who host these for me, and they host them for about £5 a month. Um, again, I'm not financially responsible for your transactions with them, but uh, I've used them, and they're very good. And um, you just you just contact them, say, I want a, an 0800 number recorded message box, 
uh, and they'll say that's fine they'll charge you five pounds a month on direct debit you pick a number which you like and then you just advertise that and people call and then uh, you have a recorded message you might say something like hi welcome to um, our company to claim your free report or whatever happens to be your call to action I'm using a free report because that happens to be something I do a lot but you could use anything you know to, to book a session to make an inquiry whatever it happens to be just leave your message after the tone it then goes beep they leave their details and then Duocall or whatever company you decide to use will email you a WIP file an audio file with that recorded message on and it, as I say it costs you five pounds a month it couldn't be any cheaper and as I say we get people calling this number quite often um, you know and you'd imagine nobody does this anymore but one something people tend not to do very often is call the office <laughs> you can offer them a website address uh, an 0800 recorded message or speak to a human being and lots of people choose these other different media now of course when they choose these other call to action you then capture their details so you can then call them but people seem to be afraid of calling an office number and speaking to somebody you're probably not because you listening to this are a confident business owner who's confident to market your own business but you've got to remember your customers might not be so we know people are a bit afraid of speaking to human beings that's why these non-human calls to action web addresses friendly urls pearls quick response codes um, you know these 0800 recorded messages all of these work really well um, so it's um, you know just just um, don't rule out any of these because they're old-fashioned Here's an example of this that I received um, a couple of days ago from Nightingale Conant, who are some of the best marketing people in the world. They're, they're incredibly well respected uh, as being marketers. And they had this very something here. I actually happened to be writing this presentation, and um, their email came in with this offer, and I thought, well, I'll just show you. Now, this is a recorded um, footage with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, two of the most wealthy people in the world and their call to action was to call this number obviously that's an American number I don't know what happens if you call it from the UK you'd have to use an American dialing tone but you can see if somebody of Nightingale Conan's uh, reputation are, um, are promoting this type of call to action you can still see that it's in fashion by the way you should probably do this because listening to Warren Buffett and uh, Bill Gates for an hour talking about how to be wise with your money is <laughs> probably some of the best advice you'll ever get so um, so why don't you uh, why don't you respond to that one of course I'm not promoting this I'm not being paid to promote this by the way I'm just using it because it's a real life example very good uh, example as well of how you use a call to action they're gonna give you a free CD or probably DVD actually so a game have designed it in a very pretty way. That's a nice graphic. Can you imagine in your sales letter or postcard if you use this type of design as a call to action? So do you see how it's not always just a call to action, or whether it's a an 0800 number, or whether it's a um, whether it's a friendly URL, whatever it happens to be. The actual graphic design of it makes a big difference because if you put this in a sales letter, it'd jump off the page automatically, or an email, or a postcard, or an advertisement, whatever you happen to be doing. Some other examples, um, you have a classic, the trusty old prepaid envelope uh, or postback reverse on a postcard. These used to be used, you know, so much to give somebody um, a form to complete uh, in a direct mail piece and say, enclose it in a prepaid envelope and send it to us. You only pay for the postage of the ones that are returned. You know, that used to work brilliantly. People have stopped using it now, but actually, you know, you, you, you can experiment with this. If you've got a more mature audience, this sort of stuff still works, as does asking people to complete the reverse of a postcard. So the front of the postcard is a promotional message. The reverse of a postcard is a form that they fill in. There's another space for them to um, put some postage on themselves and resend it back to you. So it's really easy. Do you see how it's an easy call to action because all I need to do is fill in some details and post it back to you. I don't have to worry about writing addresses and doing the rest of it. Like I say, for a more mature audience, these work as well. If I had teenagers as my target market, I'd be less likely to use this. But if I was selling cruises to the old age pensioners, you know, this sort of stuff still works. Don't believe just because the internet's there uh, that this doesn't work. It still does. Fax back form, these still work really well. You know, we've done this. So we did a campaign recently to dentists and we gave them a fax back number. So we said complete this form and either uh, go to a website and fill it in or post it back to the office in a prepaid envelope or fax it back to our office. And we got responses. Um, and actually the responses were from quite young dentists. So it wasn't even as if it was, you know, the kind of um, the more, ex you know, the, the, the older person. Um, so, you know, don't dismiss these. Tear off coupons and vouchers. These work brilliantly when you send them to people. 
um, particularly if you've got um, these tend to work better with a female and older um, audience um, that's that's just the demographic that these work very well with there are certain people in that audience that will um, use coupons and vouchers and they will collect them like there's an Olympic medal for it um, so you should tap into this because um, they love it it works very well with newspaper advertising it works great with direct mail rip off this coupon and bring it into the um, bring it into the shop these work great when you ask people to collect them as well you know you get really qualified traffic if they've sat there and collected five of these over five days and the final one more technological you'll have to speak to your web designer on how to do this but give somebody a website discount code so tell them to go to your website and enter AB10 into your um, into the, the discount code box to claim your 15% discount your web designer will it will take them seconds to add this to your website it's really easy technology and of course you can split test this because you can have three different codes one for 10% discount one for 15% discount and one for a blanket £25 off on your first order. So three different offers and you don't know which one's going to work better and you're sending something to 10,000 people. Well, for each third of them, split them into three equal groups, give one of them a code that gives them 10%, one 15% and one for the 25% off and see which one works best. So you just see how it's a brilliant call to action but it also gives you great feedback for your uh, marketing. And that's one of the main advantages of different calls to action. You can split test and see which offer works best. Other tips that you can use in call to actions, if you ask somebody to contact somebody, always give a name and a position. Again, this is one of these ones that we don't really know why it works, it just does. So tell them to call you know, David Smith, operations manager. Give them a time. You know, David's office hours are 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, so call him then. And again, there's something about that that gives people... Um, the the kind of a permission to call you at certain times where sometimes people get worried are they open at this time or and they just get confused remove that confusion and that works really well another something is when you're writing sales copy whether it's an email whether it's a website whether it's an advert whether it's a sales letter or a postcard whatever it happens to be use the call to action at least twice in the body copy don't just use it at the end. Don't wait for the reader to get the end of your very long letter before you give them a call to action. You know, that's too long. You, you, you're allowing them to go away. Too much can happen. Use it at least twice. I like to use it at least once in every page. I often write sales letters which might be four, six, eight, ten, twelve pages long. And I'll use the call to action on every page. In addition to that, you can actually use it on the footer of every page. This works very well. Just where the footer is, if you're writing a sales letter or, or an email or whatever, write the, um, you know, the call to action, whatever it happens to be. Also, if you can combine your call to action with the offer, so don't tell them just to call David Smith Operations Manager. Say, call David Smith Operations Manager um, to claim your free copy of, um, to claim your 10% discount, to make your booking, uh, to buy your widgets, whatever it happens to be. Combine the call to action with the offer. Tell them what to do, what they need to do to get it, and remind them what they're going to get, and that works very well. So that brings us to the end of today's recording, which kind of wraps up the call to action series. We've looked at quick response codes, looked at pearls, and today we've looked at friendly URLs. Uh, we've looked at how you can use 0800 numbers, and we've looked at lots of different kind of smaller tactics you can use. Remember, attention, interest, desire, and then forget all about it, is your nemesis as a marketer. You want attention, interest, desire, and action. You need action. So in our attention, interest, desire, action formula, 25% of it, the success of it is dependent on the call to action. So spend 25% of your time making it work. If you're not kind of inspired to do this despite these videos, just let me leave you with this one question. What would an extra 90% response rate mean to you? It might actually be, and it is true for a lot of businesses, that they don't need to do that much more marketing. They just need to optimize their existing marketing. And calls to action are a really easy way of doing it. It costs hardly anything. It's easy to do. Anybody can do it. It requires no technical expertise, but it can really dramatically increase your response rates. Let's just imagine it doubles it. So for every one person that makes an inquiry, you now get two. You've just doubled your return on investment. And that's perfectly possible with God's call to action. So that's the end of this call to action series. I hope you found it useful. As always, drop me any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. You'll hear from me again very soon, but between now and then, have a great time in business. Thanks for listening. Goodbye for now.